Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and how has your day been? Um, actually, mine has been okay, and we thank God so much. Now, you know, in a male chauvinistic society, there is this phrase that men are using to describe marriage. They say marriage is nowadays risky for men. I think that is a misplaced statement or opinion because it is not in a cross-sectional manner accepted. There are marriages that have been successful. And, you know, when you want to take a sample, you might only find that only one out of ten is unsuccessful. So I will distance myself from the statement that marriage is being risky for men. Now, I was bringing that to lead us to what we are going to discuss today. There is this CS in Ruto's government by the name um, Soipan Tuya who is the CS for Environment, Climate Change, and Forestry, actually. Now, she has sued her husband and is demanding upkeep. You know, we are used to doing this kind of conversations. The other time I was telling you about, you know, Opondokaloma, how the estranged wife ran to court and demanded upkeep. We have again had today, Tuya has gone to court and she is demanding that the husband to take care of the children, not even take care, to make sure that there is a mandatory upkeep for the children. And there is also, you know, amount that is being deducted on a standing order for her monthly upkeep. In fact, it is, it, it is a whooping half a million, past half a million actually. So in that breakdown, she was mentioning that she needs 100,000 for entertainment and very nitty gritties that are very much lucrative in a way and proving a posh life. Now, I want us to look at that and I want us to do a social aspect of conversation today. And it's leading me to what I started with in the first place. Is marriage really risky for men? You know, if you look at the Bible, there is this part where Jesus was teaching about marriage and he reminded people that marriage is not for everyone because it requires some aptitude of grace. Marriage is not for everyone. So if you cannot have that grace for marriage, you better remain a eunuch. If you cannot develop the flow of proper grace, then you better remain a eunuch. Still, if you are serving God, it will be best actually for you. So the destiny that is within the marriage concept it's not for everybody at the same time you know if you go deeper you will try to realize uh, that one of the very key people who wrote the new testament that is apostle paul you know there is this time they were discussing with barnabas so barnabas was saying you know i've missed my family because they used to travel with paul they used to go to places to evangelize and even convert you know believers so one day Barnabas was saying, I've missed my family. I need to go back. And Paul, you know, Paul was never married. He was, he was actually a eunuch, actually. So Paul was reminding him that if you're serving God in this capacity, at this state, you need not to think about your family. Just leave them. And it did not augur well with Barnabas. He said later, the conversation came that he told Paul, that let every man live the life that God has chosen for him. If you're supposed to marry, go and marry. If you are not to marry like you, Paul, do not marry. So that is a line of thought that will try to inform if marriage is really for everyone. First of all, it is for everyone because it is ordained by God. But to, to the extent where we see um, women in position trying to take advantage of how they have been elevated in their status, you know, to actually pin men down, it is not appropriate. It is not very much okay. The same thing which is happening to when you have an estranged wife, okay? They only come maybe to inherit your wealth after you have gone or they want, when they want to bring dispute in your family, they get the hell broke loose. So, so sometimes when people are engaging in matters to do with how should we look at marriage? Is it really a risky venture for men? The way, you know, we see the modern 
women trying to you know maneuver their ways and ensure that whatever they have you know it's like they are making sure that they have their way they're making sure that whatever they want whatever they seek whatever they demand they will be given and it actually came into a lot of you know a concentration when we had the movement like protect the girl child make sure that the girl child is protected at all levels be it education be it marriage and everything so the boy child was neglected the reasoning behind how can we protect the boy child was you know it was cooled down so they took advantage of everything and they ran away with it and even if you go to be represented in the corridors of justice they will be given more priority from they are being listened to more than the men so the narrative that has actually developed that marriage is not for everyone is supposed to be debunked and by debunking it we need to sensitize the society or the community to know exactly that if you are in a marriage setup and perhaps god has blessed you with children then definitely you have to be collaborative well enough and ensure that the responsibilities are met by both of you even if you later divorce god forbid you know the extent of agreement on for example how to share wealth because that is where the bone of contention is how do you share wealth how do you share uh, you know your prosperities okay that is where the real issue is the devil in the room that is where the devil is so even if it reaches that point i think people need to be enlightened enough and know that this is something that we are you know approaching collaboratively this is something that we came together we have been one because two will come and be one so there is no way you can just uh, maybe later come and say that when things are you know going basak you will want to pin down the man they brag to men i think that is eroding the moral uh, you know standing in the society in as far as how should marriage be upheld or how should people ensure that this is something that we are doing on a collaborative basis so it, it, it's a discussion that needs to be looked into perfectly well and for this case you know it's it's really appalling and it's worrying to see that you know she's the first um, actually woman to be representing the Maasai community in the very top so you will talk of the elevation in our status that is bringing in our mindsets to be changed everything that is thinking of how is looking at the husband and generally the male gender you know so if you were to talk of somebody who is endangered then you will be looking at this husband and you will be sympathizing with him I don't know how this is going to end but we would kind of try to agree that marriage like Jesus said is not for everyone because it requires some aptitude of grace even if there is divorce there is still that grace that was flowing in marriage and that grace will even inform how issues are being solved what do you take of this one of uh, two year what do you see is going to be the end game I think it's going to be interesting to watch and maybe we'll try to see how things come to their finality. I'll see you next May you have a great time ladies and gentlemen.